Hey, welcome everyone. In this new video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor, in this video we are going to learn how to use the combat interface without the combat manager. So why would you, why would you want to do this? Uh, well, basically, when you add a combat manager to an actor, it means uh, that actor is going to be more expensive uh, network-wise. So it adds a bunch of uh, replicated properties and stuff like that. And it adds this uh, replicated component. So you might not want to add a combat manager to all of the actor, all of the actors you have, which can take damage for, and I'm especially thinking about stuff like uh, physical props, props in the environment, destructibles, and stuff that are supposed to take damage. Uh, but are not complex. Basically, you want to add a combat manager to something that can deal damage and that can deal complex damage using uh, damage types, modifiers, etc. And if you don't want, if, if you don't have this, you might only want to use the combat interface. And we are going to see how we can do this uh, pretty easily. So we are going to create a new folder into our uh, uh, content brother call these uh, destructibles or destructible, destructible, uh, create a new blueprint class. This is going to be an actor. We are going to call this BP destructible. And then we are going to open that up, add a new, add a new static mesh, make that the root of the item. And we are going to search for a simple, uh, any, anything we, we want, actually, a cube. And we are going to say that cube can take damage, but we don't want that. Oh, we are going to open that up. We are going to add a scene. We made the scene. And we make the cube like this, 50. And it's going to be above when we put it on the ground, like that. So that cube is going to be able to take damage, but it's not going to have a combat manager. So all you are, all we have to do is to go to class settings, add, add the BPI combat interface, and it's adding a bunch of functions. And we want to say that when we die on this, when that destructible dies, we're going to destroy actor like that and we're going to specify that we received the event and then should consume hit uh, we're going to say it, we should not consume the hit of the actor because that thing is not that actor is not replicated and we do not want uh, an actor which is not replicated to be messing up with the network and blocking the hits, etc. But because maybe its state is, is different on different machines and it will mess up with the gameplay outcomes of the different actions we take if uh, that destructible is alive on the server but dead on the client, for instance. So we are not going to say it consume the hits. If we are not specifying that it consumed the hits, it's going to take damage, but it's not going to uh, for instance, block a projectile. The projectile is going to go through the, the destructible, even if the projectile is supposed to only hit one target. So we can say this, and then we can go to find team. We are going to say what time, what team is this uh, destructible part of? We are going to say it's part of the white team like this and it's going to say it's going to bring a bunch of errors uh, which we are going to get rid of by just plugging an empty array to all of them and it's going to I, I don't know if we need to specify anything else but but this I'm not sure if we do I think I'll update this for a final release of MC because uh, in here I would like to only specify the enum and not care of this, and I would like the combat manager, uh, the combat manager which deals damage to that. 
to automatically retrieve the properties of the team we specify in here and not have to specify what is the, the white team in here all over again since we already specified what is the white team in the data table row. So we could we could actually be do, doing something like getting the properties of the team. Uh, I don't even know what team I'm going to say team five. I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to specify that we want the team to be the retrieve team to be team five. And I think if we open up alliances property, teams, team five is going to be NPC. So I, I actually want team four like that because team four is neutral. So this is going to return neutral. And when it takes damage, we are going to reduce a variable. This is going to be called hit points and we're going to, to do something uh, funny. We're going to set that thing as three hit points regardless of how much damage you deal to it. It's going to be reduced by one each time. So whenever you you hit that, it's reducing the hit points by one. And if hit points equals zero, we're going to call on this like this. <clears throat> and if not, we are going to say that we did not die from damage like that. And this, this thing is actually capable of taking damage, I think. Uh, we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to say this is a function which is called uh, receive damage and we're going to open that up and we're going to say that we're actually going to make that an event like that we're going to copy it points and we're going to say that the static mesh material is going to switch for a moment when we deal damage to it just so we can properly th see that we dealt damage we are we are actually building its material by by hand a hit feedback by hand like that so when it takes damage when it takes damage we are calling receive damage which which reduce hit points and make the destructible blink we are actually going to try that out right away and it's not working and i think that's because of the collision properties of that of that box it's actually blocking everything so i think it should be taking damage except if it does not have a collision setting i'm just checking that we properly set all of this up so we are receiving damage and if i'm hitting play we are actually not dealing damage to that and i'm not sure why So, what is not working? We are going to open up one of the destructibles in there just to see how is it set up. When I take damage, I'm actually giving an impulse and in there I'm just returning this <laughs> like we, we like we did when we set it up so it's actually set up the same way except it doesn't have it doesn't have the same type of collisions it has character mesh collisions and maybe that's why we are not dealing damage to that 
we are going to go into the find team function and we are going to get rid of that and just copy and paste what we found in the physical prop just to see if it reacts better if not I think it comes from the collisions so I think it comes from the collisions if we add a box collision to that and we make that a little bit bigger like that and we make that box uh, for instance a character mesh I think it's going to work right away yep one two and three and it's and it's dead and it's dead uh, and it's not there it's not dead here and I'm not sure why the clients It's not dead on the client, it's, it never dies on the client. And I'm not sure why. Since it does not replicate, it should be dying. We're going to find out why, why it doesn't work on clients by just printing the hit points. It's actually full local, so nothing should come And it's failing to properly focus that. So my character is not rotating towards it. And we have a character rotation issue coming from our BP slice, which makes us rotate. But we are not going to rotate if we do not have any targets like this. So it should be easier for us to actually understand. So the client actually never kills that. And I'm not sure why. It never kills it. Take damage. If the if the hit points are below zero or equal to zero, we are going to do that. Okay, I think that's because I'm not returning true here, maybe. On this, when the character, when, when it dies, we are destroying the actor. It should be working. One, two, three, zero, minus one, minus two. Uh, it's quite strange, actually. We want to print in here because actually it, it's obvious that we have something weird going on. It's saying hello all the time, but it's not triggering the on death. That's quite odd. On death, we are destroying that actor. But that's not that act, that's not a replicated actor, so it's really weird that it it behaves differently it should not behave differently on actor and uh, on server and on client so i'm not sure what's going on and it's it's triggering it's trigger it's triggering on this but it's not destroying the actor uh, we're going to check is that actor replicated and we're going to print that value because it behaves like a replicated actor or more or less it behaves like a strange it's not a replicated actor then why does it fail to die it's never uh, yeah it's never going to die in here since I specify I, I remove the destroy. Uh, if we make that invisible, is it going to work? I suppose it is going to work, but I'm not sure. 
Okay, so it's working everywhere uh, like it's supposed to. But it's uh, we're, I'm going to remove them and I'm going to add them once again. Like this, I'm going to save and I'm going to try again destroy actor like that. Hit play. And it's only being destroyed on server and I think that's a bug because this is this is not a replicated actor so it, it should be all the same. If I specify dorm never and if I specify do not net load on client, for instance. So it's not even it's not even there. So it's quite strange. And if I specify this And if we say that actor replicates, it's going to work. But I think we do not want that. Because the, the actor is cost, is costing more uh is costing more but it's costing more bandwidth overall. So if we delete that, and if we if we try, we don't want to be replicated. If if we try a little hack and set the lifespan of the actor 2.1, for instance, this is going to be destroyed automatically after 0.1 second in theory. Okay, so it's not working anyway. So that's really it's the client cannot destroy. The client cannot destroy them despite them being uh, not replicated and have nothing to do with the network. And I don't want the tick to be enabled there, for instance. And I'm wondering what might be causing this because it's uh, it's getting in the way of what I wanted to showcase uh, that was uh, a cheap a cheap way to implement uh, destructibles and physical props into into your world and of course you could be hiding the the mesh and and destroying the collision but you will still get to your computer will still calculate the fact that there is an actor there so it's not an ideal solution not to remove this so that's that's actually quite weird and i think that's a bug from the engine because it's not, it has never behaved that way So I so I think I think we are going to try something else there something like this If we destroy all of the components that actor has has maybe it is going to be removed from the scene and i want to know okay so what errors do we have static mesh from static mesh but it's pending kill if we destroy mm, if we only destroy the scene, what do we have? We have nothing, and if, if we only destroy the box and the static mesh, it's working, but we are getting an error, and I'm not sure why. 
set material okay of course we i do know why that's because the event graph is asking for is trying to set the material on the mesh and we only want to do that if the mesh is still valid so we have somewhat fixed the error but it's it's really not ideal i think it's going to be fixed by epic but but for now it's not so we have to do what with what we have and we made uh, an unreplicated system of destructibles uh, which are uh, bandwidth bandwidth efficient so it's going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.